I think I was very lucky to have a very special friend who walked with me through thick and thin, you know, the whole time. She couldn't relate to my story. It's not like she had had a similar experience. Mm -hmm. But she was just a solid friend who you knew that when you said, can you pray for me, she would pray for you. Right. You know, and there were times where I was like, you know what, I don't want to pray anymore. I actually just don't want to pray about this. Yeah. And she'd go, it's okay, I got this for you. Hello and welcome. I'm Tanya Reason and this is the Gospel According to Mum, the show where we discuss the transformational work done in us by Jesus Christ as we live out motherhood and discipleship with Him. My guest on this episode is Vanessa Heasley. Vanessa is a married mum of two teenagers. She grew up in Colombia for 15 years as the daughter of missionary parents and has served her churches as an administrator and youth and home group leader. She loves hiking, running and camping and is active in encouraging Christian women to extend themselves physically, to find endurance and build up their character and confidence for Christ. In part one of this episode, Vanessa shares her story of waiting for children for three challenging years and her journey through different fertility treatments, at the end of which she was blessed with two children conceived naturally. From that point, Vanessa believes nothing else about motherhood has been natural. We discuss finding God in the spiritual, physical and intellectual challenges of motherhood and how her faith was impacted by her daily need for God's support and presence. Vanessa, thank you so much for being on the show. I'm really excited to talk to you tonight. We've got lots of interesting things to cover. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's exciting to be here. No, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you've brought some really interesting ideas around um, discipline. It's I know it's a big thing for you. You're very interested in sport and training the body. So we're going to touch on that a bit later on yeah. in the conversation because I think there are some really great points there. Cool. Um, but before we get started, I'd really like to know a bit about your story, your, your faith story before you became a mum. You can go back as far as you would like. Because okay. I know you have an interesting, <laughs> you had an interesting childhood, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Um, I grew up in a missionary home. So my mum and dad were missionaries in South America. And I was three when we went over there. And we lived there for 15 years. So I guess as a child, it was a normal childhood. You mm. know, when you're a child, you just a kid in your own home with rules and boundaries and all the things that parents do. Yeah. Um, so it was, I wouldn't say that as a child I thought it was any different to anyone else's life. Um, but upon reflection, I guess as an adult, I go, oh, I did have a very different childhood, you know. I guess I probably experienced my parents' faith quite deeply. It wasn't personal for me at the time. But just seeing how much my mum and dad just depended on God for everything, you know, mm -hmm. the, you know, where was the next bit of money coming from to live on, etc., gave me a really good insight into what depending on God really, really looks like. So I think that that's kind of like a cool experience to have had, you know, yeah. at the time I didn't think so, but... Yeah. <laughs> Well, it was just normal and, you know, yeah. but now I go, oh, that was really cool to be able to see my parents <clears throat> really exercise faith on a daily basis Yeah, um, and just live it out very real with us. You know, they never pretended that stuff wasn't not happening. Mm -hmm. um, they, you know, were very, oh, well, we have no money left. Let's pray about that. You know, so it was very lived out at home. There was no pretending life wasn't happening. It, it was happening and we just we would just pray about it, you know, right. and God would come through. So that was cool. That's amazing, yeah. yeah. Well, it shouldn't be amazing. But yeah. <laughs> it shouldn't be it's amazing. It's a wonderful experience to see that firsthand yeah. like from, from an early age. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. And so where were you in the lead up to becoming a mother? In my faith journey yeah. or just in life? Yeah, yeah, in my faith journey. Um, I was um, working for church part-time, being a young adults pastor, and I had a secular job part-time as well. I job shared at the time. And that was a really a fun experience. You know, he he looked after youth and I looked after young adults and we just worked together as a team. It was very different. I'd never done something like that before. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess I was asked to think about it. And then a number of people, without knowing that I was actually thinking about it, spoke into my life. And I was like, oh, this might be God calling me to do something. Um, right. 
So it was an amazing experience, very backed by Andrew as well. That's your so, husband. Yes, my husband, yes. Um, and it was very rewarding, you know, working with young people who had really just finished <laughs> school, had no idea what they wanted to do in life. And, you know, you're sort of really trying to find your feet as a young person at that age. You know, when you're a kid, there's, you know, Sunday school for you and there's schooling and, and you kind of know what you're doing. And then there's youth group and then you finish school and youth group and you just go, oh, what, what's, what's, in it, what's in store for me now? Right, yeah. You know, so I think it was a very um, rewarding journey in the sense of mentoring people and just walking life with them. And then obviously we, you know, desperately wanted to have a family and that wasn't happening at the time. So, mm. you know, we'd gone and lived in Canada for 12 months and then we had travelled for 10 weeks or so on our way back to Australia. We'd gone through Europe and we'd had a wonderful time, an amazing mm. experience. We always wanted to travel before we had kids. We wanted to go and live overseas and do that. And so we'd done all of that. Mm -hmm. But our heart was to, to come back, you know, and have a family. And, you know, we just thought it would all be very... Uh, just fall into place like yeah. textbook. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Isn't fun. that the way it happens? <laughs> you make a decision and I'll yeah. <laughs> this is it. Okay, yeah. this is what's going to happen. But mm. yeah, it was a bit of a long three years of trying to have a family mm. and um, very non-textbook, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, invasive, you know, surgeries, medication, doctor's visits, yeah. you know, blood tests, AIs, you know, which is, artificial insemination you know yeah, I loved what, making, you, what you said in your notes that that making a baby with your doctor is very unromantic it's unromantic and not at all fun and, yeah it's not it's not yeah. and just not what you imagine you know it's it's not what you see on tv and it's not what you read in books and it's not it's just not how you imagine life mm. sort of turning out so so three years of just you know ups and downs yeah. in that time you know as you're as you're dealing with all of that and your hormones and your medication and all those kind of things, mm. you know, you go from the, oh, it's going to be this month to, oh, no, it's not. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. sort of a lot of highs and lows and trying to ride that out with the rest of life, you know, mm. because life continues to happen whether you're trying to have a child or not. That's right. right. Yeah. 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 So and you've got, not only have you got the disappointment every month, mm. but... I, you you mentioned this walk of shame, and I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm. And I find it fascinating that we have this this shame mm. that's surrounding it because I didn't feel ashamed before I started to try mm. and have children that I didn't have children. Yes. But as soon as I started trying, somehow it became a different animal. Mm. Absolutely. I mean, how did that go with you? And 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 I mean, what what impact did that have mm. on your faith at the time? Mm. I think it's interesting because I don't know what creates the shame. I think it's just, I don't know if it's something that happens. I don't know if it's an expectation we have on ourselves or it's an expectation that society has on us. Mm. You know, the expectation is that you will grow up to be a good human and that you will get married and you will have children and you will raise a wonderful family and you know like and and there's all these it's a societal expectation but it's also an expectation we place on ourselves you know mm -hmm. like my mom and dad had that expectation of me that I would marry and be a good wife and be a good mom and you know and and suddenly that's not happening so it does feel like a walk of shame you know you mm -hmm. feel like people are so, Vanessa, when are you going to have children? And it's the, it's the conversation you just don't want to keep having with mm. people. Well, let me tell you how it went this yeah. week. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not something you're proud of. Mm. It's also not something that you want people's sympathy over. So yeah. it's, it's yeah. this kind of fine line between don't ask me or actually ask me because I, I want to tell you. It's not the thing you want to tell everybody, but yeah. you want some people that really care to, to know about it, you know. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, I feel like it was, a, a yeah, years of, like it was a shame. It was almost like it was, oh, it's me. I can't have children when it's, mm. that's not necessarily the case. It's just how it is, you know. Mm. My faith, I probably really, I wondered often where God was in that whole equation because I know that God could just, 
answer my request right then mm-hmm. and I often felt very angry that God didn't answer yeah. and you'd had this childhood where you've seen you yeah. know, you've seen prayers answered I've seen God work amazingly yeah. and to suddenly go but why me why not why mm-hmm. am I not good enough and you can't answer my prayer like that was the they were the kind of feelings I would have and wrestle with you know mm-hmm. um and so I think I was, I think I spent a, a, quite a lot of time just dis- disappointed in God right. and, and angry that, yeah. he, that why not? You can answer. I've seen you do it. Why? Why me? You know? Yeah. It's um, interesting that our mind goes first to what's, what's wrong with me? Yes. Not why is this not the plan or yeah. how long will I need to wait? Yes. God, it's always what's wrong with me? me what have absolutely. I done wrong? Mm. Yes. Yeah. I think we don't often pause and, and think of it from outside of ourselves we're too consumed with where we're at that we can't see it from the outside almost you know Mm. I think I was very lucky to have a very special friend who walked with me through thick and thin you know the whole time she couldn't relate to my story it's not like she had had a similar experience Mm -hmm. but she was just a solid friend who you knew that when you said can you pray for me she would pray for you right you know and there were times where I was like you know what I don't want to pray anymore I actually just don't want to pray about this yeah. and she'd go it's okay I got this for you wow. <laughs> and that was yeah. really amazing experience to know that you had someone there who you could be very honest with and say I am angry I am yeah. sad you know I am disappointed that God's not he's not doing what I'm asking him to do you know and that she would just go it's good I got this for you this week. I'll make sure I'm praying for it. Don't pray. Don't have to pray. You know, just take that pressure off you. And I think that was That's an amazing wonderful. experience. Yeah. Yeah. I think if anyone goes through that journey, um, I couldn't speak more highly of finding somebody who can walk that journey with you. Right. Yeah. Mm. That's that's an unusual person to come across because most yeah. of the time people out of a genuine urge to help, mm. want to help. Mm try and give you advice or you know tell you you know you shouldn't don't give up you shouldn't keep don't stress just relax (laughs) (laughs) don't stop praying don't stop talking to God but sometimes actually you just can't can Mm. you I mean you just can't say that thing one more time yeah 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 and have someone take it off your shoulders yes it's very Christ-like it is incredibly and I just I, I just think that was my saving grace was having someone like that walk with me because yeah I think I think we often just try and solve people's problems rather than walk with people yeah that's an interesting thought isn't it because we want God to step in and solve our problems but maybe he's just walking with us Mm. absolutely which is a more of a relationship definitely than you know than a a magic genie who comes Mm. and fixes everything yes Absolutely. Yeah. You spoke about it being very lonely too. Mm-hmm. And as time passed and, and obviously children did arrive, as you look back now, you see that you've gained some real empathy and mm. compassion from that experience. Mm. So I'm just wondering if if you feel like it's important for us to understand Jesus, to go through these lonely times. Um, because I feel as if he was very lonely and yeah. alone there was a lot that was yeah in his walk that was alone alone yeah definitely and I think that at the time no one likes a trial and a hard situation you know we always want it to be life to be good mm. you know and and problems I mean who wants problems really yeah <laughs> but I think we always learn from hard things and so I think that that loneliness, you know, was probably something because I didn't feel like I could talk about this with everyone. I didn't want to talk about it with everyone. So in turn, you felt like it was a lonely journey as you watched your friends have children and you go, oh, that would be nice. You know, you felt alone in a room full of people with babies. It feels like like everybody has a baby too when you're trying to get When you're trying, it's like, why? Everybody else has a baby. Did you just decide last night? Okay, that's great. (laughs) Congratulations. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. So that's I think, an exercise in humility, isn't it? Yeah. Congratulating someone. It is. When definitely. You come through that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I think you're probably right. I think, um, you know, Jesus did spend a lot of time alone going through things. And so maybe that does give us, um, 
I don't know, just a different view on God, perhaps, mm. you know, like I think rather than our faith become being so theoretical sometimes, I think experiencing things personally make makes our faith more real. Yeah, yeah. You know? I think also it seems as though we, we really want to to see our lives played out in other people's lives and mm. we have that that urge to compare all the time. Yeah. But when, I, when I was reading your notes, I was reminded of John twenty one twenty two, where Jesus says, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? Mm. You follow me. Mm. And it, it came into my head as I was reading mm. what you were saying because I suddenly thought all of our all of our lives are really individual. Yeah. And yes, we're meant to help each other and be there for mm. each other. And you had this wonderful friend who mm. that, that was exactly what you would want. Yeah. But to expect our lives to run the same course as anybody else. Mm. It seems like he's directly saying the opposite. Yes. There. Don't yeah. look at anybody else. Yeah. You do what I tell you. Yeah, absolutely. But it's really hard when what he's telling you is not the thing you wanted. Isn't yeah. It? yeah. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think that's the hard thing is because you have a picture of what you want your life to be. And that can be so different to what God wants it to be. Mm. But it I think, seems good, though, doesn't it? Like you, yeah. Most of the time you think, what, this is what's good. What's wrong with my plan? It's yeah. a good plan. I like my plan. You like children? Like, what's <laughs> That's right. I'm sure you would be happy to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. But I think, too, it's probably perspective, isn't it? Because I guess like when you're in your little bubble of what's happening for you, your perspective is really narrow and really honed in on what is happening for you. Mm -hmm. And I guess, you know, for God, when he's kind of, his perspective is so broad, you know, he's not just saying you, but he's saying how you fit into someone else's life and how this is going to work with this. And, mm -hmm. you know, and so his perspective of what you need to go through is so different to what we need to go through because we don't see all the other little pieces. Yeah, that's right. You know? Yeah. And so eventually, yes, baby appeared. The baby appeared Hooray. eventually. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. That <laughs> yes. must have been, you know, it an was, exciting moment. It was very exciting. It was, yeah, a bit like surreal when it finally um, happened, and it all happened very naturally after all. <laughs> right. So yeah. After me saying, oh, "I am not doing this anymore. I am walking away from this," right. you know, then probably about six weeks later we got pregnant. So, and I had just said, "No, nah, not doing this anymore. Not." I am resigned to the fact that this is it. We're not, we're not going to have children. Yeah. We need to look at different options. We might adopt children. We might, you know, right. I just don't want to talk about it right now. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and then suddenly and I was you pregnant. Let, you so, let oh. go. <laughs> I let go. Yeah, wow. Yeah, so that yeah. was cool. And then and then I had the thought that this might be an only child, you know, mm -hmm. and we need to be okay with that. And we need to be, this isn't, again, not the ideal of what we would want, right. but we need to be okay with it being an only child. But it... She wasn't an only child, so yeah. we went from having a beautiful little girl and yeah. having a beautiful little boy, so, you know, one of each. Do you feel as if you were stronger making that decision after all that you'd been through? Um, stronger in saying, yes, this might be the only... This, yeah, absolutely, mm. yeah. I think it was... I wasn't... It was a peaceful resignation. Like, sometimes you can be like, oh, fine, okay, you know, if that's what you want, but it's not. it's not a... It's not a joyful resignation yeah. or something. Yeah. But I think when you go through something and you're like, we were so excited to have our beautiful little girl yeah. that it almost felt like if if this is what it has to be, then that's okay. Yeah. Because what a blessing we have already. Right. So I think, yeah, I definitely had a much more peaceful resignation to it, you know. Yeah. But I yeah. didn't have, you know, like... I don't know, a couple of months later, I was pregnant again. I know, so. yeah, it was very quick. <laughs> very quick, yes. After that, but yeah. again, I just think, well, that was that was by far such a gift from God, deciding yeah. that he could, you can do this again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so the children had arrived, and you talked about having a, a theoretical understanding that God loved you and cared for mm. you. When did that start to become a real, a, a real relationship for you? Was it during mm. the period of waiting, or was it after the children had actually appeared? Um, 
I think it was more after the children. I think during that whole process of not being able to have kids, there was too much disappointment and anger and frustration at God for it to feel like, why do I bother in this relationship? You know, only for my very faithful friend (laughs) praying and, you know, being there for me and just holding that space for me, I suppose, Mm. is what I would say. Um, Is that then afterwards, I think that knowledge started to be less theoretical, you know, that then the, I then had a um, thankfulness for the blessing I'd been given, you know, right. and a whole like, oh, this is way harder than what I thought. Okay, great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, so yeah. then there was a like, oh, I think I need you. I think I need to depend on you a little bit more. Maybe mm-hmm. we should chat yeah. about this today. Yeah. How am I going to do it today? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes. so I think it started to progress right from that Mm. from the start of having children to being a much more practical faith you know and i think it's just you know life is busy with kids and you worry and you're you're it's it's constant and you find yourself just constantly having to chat to another adult you know because there was a lot of kid conversations so suddenly being able to talk to god felt like a like an adult conversation right yeah you know, in my day yeah. I need I need an adult to um to listen to me and to talk yeah. to me and and that was good you know right and then I think just living life with the kids and doing things like I don't know prayer just became simple I suppose mm. you know you know if the kids had lost something they'd be like I can't find this and they're having a meltdown and you go well, let's have a look and we look for it and then we go, well, let's just pray about it and see, you know. And often that item would turn up, not necessarily straight away, but it would turn up. And there was always the excitement from them just saying, oh, God, answered my prayer, you know. It's right, like they were, yeah. And so it's, it, it became a lot more practical yeah. in my faith, I think. Yeah. You know, like much yeah. less theoretical. You should pray. It's like, oh, no, I actually really like to pray right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's lovely. Mm. Yeah. And so, like, did you find that um, the way that you prayed in front of your children was different? Did it did that yeah. develop? Yeah. I think much more simple, much more relationship-based. Um, right. yeah. I think, you know, as a kid... I probably had a fairly traditional, strict kind of upbringing, and so my prayers were formatted in a certain way. Okay. And I think uh, praying with the kids was just like, oh, God, can you please help us now? We really need to find, you know, we need to find that car before we leave the house because meltdown was happening, you know. So so it wasn't like, oh, dear Father, come into your presence. I'd be, you know, like it was... It was just like a natural conversation. Yeah. And I think um, that was a great way to to show the kids how to pray as well. Mm. Is that it didn't have to be in a certain place. It didn't have to be at a certain time. And mm. it didn't have to be in a certain way. It was just, you're just you chatting. Right now. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. yeah. yeah I, I've had that experience with my oldest yes. recently, actually, m- more so now. But she, just in the back of the car, she yes. says to me, Mum, can I talk to God now? And I said, sure. Yeah. Just talk away. I, you know, I can I can join you if you want, or you just talk. Yeah. He loves to hear from you, you know. Yeah, that's and so I cool. Think, yeah, I think it must be just because she's mm-hmm. heard me go, God, yeah. help me now. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> I can't help yes. this child. <laughs> Please can you? I, normally, I'm lost, I've lost yeah. something. Yes. My mind, mostly. Yes, but. it's true. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't gotten that back yet. I'm <laughs> still looking for that one. Yeah, no. yeah Don't expect no. it back anytime soon. Yeah. <laughs> but I wanted to talk to you about the naturalness of motherhood mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you said something that was really helpful to me mm-hmm. after my first was born and things were not happening naturally <laughs> in my body. And you said there's nothing about motherhood that's natural. Mm. And as I've gone through my journey with the kids and that I've actually found that a really encouraging thought Mm -hmm. in terms of God Mm -hmm. because if you think about if we lift everything to nature and natural processes I really am starting to think that my children would be dead by now it's very true (laughs) not to mention all of the other things that they really need and one of the things that came up in in what you were talking about was discipline Mm -hmm. and I want to know what you think about discipline and how 
how disi- disciplining your children has impacted the way you see God. Mm. Yes, well, I don't think that there's anything natural about being a mum. I think mm. it is a learnt experience, which is good. Like, it's not like you just instinctively know everything to do or you just open a textbook and it's there. Mm. You've got to learn as your children grow. Right. And so what you know now when they're toddlers is very different to what you're going to know when they're teenagers, Mm. you know, because you just grow with them and grow in your parenting. Mm. And I guess discipline is one of those things that you have to start on from a very young age, you know, because your children want to touch what they're not meant to touch and want to have what they can't have. Mm. And, you know, it's all about creating boundaries and safe boundaries for them for a reason, you know, like, no, you can't run on the road because there are cars coming down the road, you know, like they don't see that, but like you and I know the impact of of that and the devastation we would feel if a car hit our children and, Mm. you know, we lost them. And so I think in setting all those boundaries, they don't understand what's happening. So it's hard to set the boundaries because you can't really explain the boundaries all the time. Mm. Sometimes you can. As they get older, they yeah. you know, have that you know, ability to recognize why you're putting the boundary in place. But I guess when I think about discipline, it's, I'm always thinking that what I'm doing is in your best interest. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing this just to be mean. Yeah. Like, I'm not just yeah. saying no because no. You know? Yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, you will not have that. It's like, yeah. no, you can't have that because that would mean you're stealing from the shop. So no, I want you to be a good person in life. So no, here's the lesson about stealing. Mm. <laughs> we don't yeah. do that, you know? Yeah. And so I think there's all those boundaries that happen that they don't understand, but it's with their best interest at heart. And I guess the way I think about that now is that that's probably how God has to deal with us and we just don't get it half the time Mm. you know and he's kind of going oh Vanessa here we go again (laughs) like I need you to learn so here's some boundaries I need to put in place for you to you know he's not doing things for um, to, to be, be mean. mean. He's mm. not. He's doing it with my best interest at heart. And so I think it's a little bit easier if you look at if you look at things from that perspective. Yeah. Because that God's not actually being mean to you. You yeah. know, and, and maybe not allowing us to have kids when we wanted to have kids wasn't him being mean. It was you know, there was a journey for us to learn in mm. that in that process. At the time I didn't know what what on earth are you trying to do to me? I'm not getting it. Like, yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I think always things in hindsight make sense. Yes. You yeah. know, you've learned something. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I find myself doing that with the kids a lot because they want chocolate now. Yeah. And I've actually used the phrase, I'm not saying no, I'm just saying wait. Yeah. Which is hilarious yeah. if, you, if you know anything about me because I'm the most ridiculously difficult person to get to wait for anything <laughs> and so stubborn yeah um and i've i've taught i've disciplined myself yeah frequently by yeah. saying that and i think i'm so sorry god i'm so sorry <laughs> but it's because they can't see that you know having chocolate now is a bad thing hmm. absolutely I and i don't mind if they have a bit of chocolate now and yeah. then but they have to have it at the right time yes that's right. And they maybe right even before bed, they're not going to sleep. Yeah, they're not <laughs> yeah. going to sleep. They're going to have a bad day yeah. tomorrow. The roll on effect of Absolutely. all of these things is not because I hate them. I no. just want them to have a nice life. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. you understand repercussions whilst they don't understand. Yeah. So, so I can see yeah. much further ahead. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. It's hard to comprehend how far ahead God can see. Yeah. Isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And yeah. It's and just, not just our life. It's. But again, children's lives that's right. and everyone else. And I think it. it again comes down to that perspective is that, you know, we are in, this is our narrow little perspective. This is where we are. Well, God's just got that, you know, vision out like that, you know, seeing everything and everyone and how it's all going to work. And we're just stuck in that now. Thanks for listening today. You can find out more about the show, our guests, and subscribe and download through all our channels by visiting thegospelaccordingtomum.com. In part two of my conversation with Vanessa, we explore letting go of our children and allowing them to find their own path in God's plan. 
We discuss how our approach to disciplining our children and ourselves feeds into our faith and relationship with God. In the meantime, be encouraged, friend, and remember the God who taught you to love will not leave you as you walk with Him more and more at your own pace. I'm Tanya Reason, and you've been listening to The Gospel According to Mum. Till next time.